let's recognize that there's different categories of dentistry. There's many categories of dentistry, but I'm going to suggest they fundamentally fall into three categories. One category um, would be um, symptomatic general dentistry. In other words, the patient's in pain, the patient's in pain, symptomatic general dentistry. That's one category. Second category is asymptomatic general dentistry. So now this is general dentistry that they definitely need. They could benefit from, but because it's asymptomatic, what does that mean, Aaron? Uh, that means um, it's not like it's hurting it them. It doesn't hurt. Is it what doesn't it hurt. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. So that's a second category, general dentistry that is asymptomatic. And I'm going to give you benchmarks for all three of these. And then the third one is I'm going to call comprehensive care or elective treatment. You know, it's kind of a combined category, comprehensive care slash elective treatment. So now uh, in, the, in, the, in the fabled um, classic Stephen Covey concept, begin with the end in mind, I'm going to share with you some benchmarks that we've established and we have proven through a long enough tracking with, with enough clients to prove that these benchmarks are pretty useful. So your, your treatment acceptance goal, Naren, um, for symptomatic general dentistry, it, it hurts, is, wait for it, wait for it, drum roll, please, 100%. 100%. If the, if the patient says, doc, you know, you can see their, their cheek is swollen out, you know, uh, they have tears rolling down their cheeks, the patient tells you, doc, I haven't slept in the last three nights because of this pain. Um, well, as a, as a dentist, you can say, you know, George, I am so sorry you're experiencing that pain and I'm glad you're here. Um, we can help you get out of pain today. And, and by the way, to do that, I recommend we do this. If you don't have hundred percent case acceptance on that one, you might want to uh, think about a different career. <laughs> uh, I'm being playful. I'm not being critical. Um, but uh, I think we'd all agree that on symptomatic, they're in pain. And if we have the ability to help them, then we should see 100% case acceptance. Now let's go to asymptomatic general dentistry. Maybe the most, the, the most useful example of asymptomatic general dentistry, because it's still a reality today, is a patient that has old amalgam fillings. They were placed many, many years ago. You know, as many offices that don't place amalgam fillings today. Of course, there are still offices that place amalgam fillings. But this is a patient that has old amalgam fillings. They've been around for a long time in their mouth. Clearly, they're breaking down, and that you have evidence of that by visual inspection, by uh, radiographic uh, evidence, and also through photographic evidence. You've taken pictures, and you see that they're breaking down. Um, but because it's asymptomatic, what does that mean, Aaron? Because it's uh, they don't have to do anything, right? Like, I mean, for example, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. Disease, right? Like sometimes, oh, well, it's not that big of a deal because it's early stage, or I don't, I don't, I don't feel the difference. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it doesn't hurt. And so your treatment acceptance on that, we benchmarked it. And by the way, these benchmarks, as I go to, down to this one, and then the next category of um, comprehensive care slash elective care, they're the challenging goals. Your goal for asymptomatic general dentistry and, and treatment acceptance is 70% or above. Okay. 70% or above. That's a high level of performance, Naren, but it's realistic. You can get there with the skill building, with skill set you know, developing your skill at presenting dentistry, you can get there. Now let's go to the third category. So the third category is comprehensive care um, and or elective treatment. And our benchmark there um, is between 30 and 40%, 30 and 40%. Now, let me take a minute and explain why um, we've established that at 30 to 40%. Obviously, we'd like 100%, right, Aaron? Yes, <laughs> we, of course, like we all do. But, but even in baseball, realistic. right? Nobody, nobody hits every, every, every. Well, let's use a baseball analogy because I grew up in a baseball family. Uh, love baseball, love all the stats in, in baseball. If a major league baseball player has a career batting average of let's say 350, 350. I'm just picking a number. Sure. Uh, there would be a, a, a place for that uh, career major league baseball player and a title for that yes. career baseball player. What title would be hung on that career major league baseball player with a career batting average of 350? Uh, that means he's getting, he's hitting 350 out of a thousand. Uh, and what do they and, call that person? 
a hall of famer. A hall of famer. Yes. Hall of famer. And basically uh, if, if any, if a baseball player had a career batting average between 300 and 400, they would be, they would be an automatic induction in the hall of fame. Right. Um, well, I'd like to think Naren, that all of our listeners of the thriving Dennis show are hall of famer Dennis. Yes. I'd like to think so. Uh, I believe you are docs. Um, and so if you want to be a hall of famer dentist, then you're going to have uh, treatment acceptance for ideal dentistry, elective dentistry between 30 and 40%. Because again, back to that baseball analogy, if his batting average was 350, that means that he gets a hit 35% of the time, 35% of the time. And remember, we're measuring that within a year, within a one year period of time. So that makes it a little bit tougher. We're not saying 10 years, we're not saying five years, we're saying within a year. Now you have a way to measure it. And now if we circle back to Peter Drucker, um, you can't manage what you can't measure. So now using the opposite, we'll use it a positive, you can manage that which you measure. And, and so now you're measuring this. And I want to explain why it's so important to measure this. Because if you're not measuring this, the only way you have a way of knowing how you're doing is anecdotal evidence. Yes. And I can't tell you how many times in my client base, I've asked my client, um, hey, you know, uh, Dr. Maria, how do you think you're doing with your case acceptance? And typically she will answer with an anecdote. She'll say, well, Gary, you know, I, I'm not sure, but yesterday we had two new patients, both of them needed treatment and both of them scheduled. So I think we're doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. Or she might answer in the, in the uh, opposite method. She might say, well, Gary, you know, I'm glad you're, you're asking me about this because uh, I don't think we're doing very well. Uh, yesterday, we had two new patients. Both of them uh, needed, it wasn't symptomatic, it was asymptomatic. Both of them needed treatment and neither one of them scheduled. So I don't think we're doing very well at all. Now, neither one of those perceptions are truly accurate because they're clouded by the anecdotal evidence of having it happen relatively immediately. Yes. You're clouded by a false sense of achievement because, well, yesterday, new patient came in and they scheduled. Yes. Or, oops. We're doing horrible at that. Had a new patient yesterday and they didn't do anything. <laughs> so I now think, you have a way to measure it. You're going to measure it over a year. Um, you have three different buckets and three different goals. If it's, you know, again, symptomatic general dentistry, we want 100%. If it's asymptomatic general dentistry, uh, we're shooting for 70% or above. And if it's uh, comprehensive care or uh, elective care, uh, then we're looking for uh, somewhere between 30 and 40%. And now that you have a way to measure it, now you can work on improvement and skill building to get those goals, to achieve the goals that have been established. 